Hi and welcome to this video. This is about producing standing waves on a string. It's a really useful demonstration to do in the classroom. Um, normally you might do this with older students when you're thinking about standing waves but you can also use it to demonstrate um, some of the basic properties of waves like amplitude and wavelength if you, if you would like to. To do this demonstration you need a signal generator. I've got one of these orange Unilab units here. You need a vibration generator piece of string. I've got this set up along a bench here with um, a bench pulley over there that I'll show you in a moment with some weights on the end, some masses I should say, that are going to provide a tension in this string. I've also just set up a little bit of a screen here just to screen off some of the mess on the desk but also provide a, an easier, slightly easier way of, of, of observing what happens on the string. So the idea being with this, the signal generator provides an alternating current output. Um, now that AC output is, is coming through these wires here and um, the alternating current causes this vibration generator to move up and down in much the same way that an audio speaker um, moves up and down in response to an AC audio, electrical audio signal. So, so that's going to move up and down and if I, if I just um, switch that on, hopefully you can see it's just vibrating up and down there. Now every time it vibrates, it sends a wave, a progressive wave, down this string. And the wave travels all the way down to the other end. And then when it hits the other end, um, it's held tight, it, it reflects back. And the two waves travel in opposite directions down the string. They've got the same frequency and roughly the same amplitude, same wavelength. And as they, as they interact, sometimes they add up and sometimes they cancel out. And at certain frequencies of the vibration, they add up and, and cancel out in, in special ways that we call standing waves. Here you can see where the waves in coming in either direction cancel out, a stationary point or node. And here you can see where they reinforce and add up. You can see an anti-node with a lot of vibration. And we can find those by turning the dial of the signal generator. So I can find the first standing wave by doing that. And the first standing wave is where we've got a stationary point at either end of the string and a point in the middle where the string is vibrating a lot. We call these stationary points nodes and in the middle it will be called an anti-node. And if I turn the frequency up then I can find the next special pattern. You can see at some points there's no special vibration at all, it just kind of disappears almost. The, the vibration, they don't add up in a special way, but then at this frequency look um, if I just tune it correctly, and you can see I've got to be really careful and gentle about how I adjust the frequency, you can see that I've managed to make the next standing wave. This has got a node, an anti-node, another node in the middle this time, an anti-node, and a node at the end. Um, so the first one will be called the fundamental, or the first harmonic. This will be called the second harmonic. Um, and then you can adjust the frequency and, and find others as well. Now, the factors that affect these frequencies are um, the tension in the string, the length of the string, and the mass per unit length of the string. So you can do a number of different investigations with this equipment. Um, you can vary the length. That's what my meter ruler is here to do here, look, to measure the length. That's quite easy to do just by moving the signal generator. Uh, sorry, not moving, this, moving the vibration generator. And if you, I show you my setup here, you can see how I would do that. What I like to do is I like to pass the string through the hole in the top of the vibration generator and attach it to something solid, which this clamp stand that I've uh, G-clamped to the table. The reason I've done that is I don't want the... The, um, the vibration generator to be bearing any of the tension because what that can do is it can, it can cause that to bend and break. Don't want that. But also what it means is I can very easily adjust the length of the vibrating string by just moving, by just moving the vibration generator along the table like this. By moving it backwards and forwards and if I move the whole set of equipment I can change the length really easily and measure that. And I would measure it from there where it joins the vibration generator right the way to the other end where it touches the, the pulley. If I show you how I'm varying the tension, here I've got my 100 gram masses. Obviously 100 gram mass is one newton of tension. I've got three at the moment on here, so that'll be three newtons of tension. And um, I just simply attach that to the end of my string 
with a knot. Okay, and then I hang it over a bench pulley that goes over the end of the table, which I can just show you here. This is a bench pulley. Okay, so I'm using, um, I'm using string, but you can use other materials. Another useful one to use is elastic, that's a different mass per unit length, and you can, you can compare um, the frequencies that you observe, the standing waves on there. Really hope that's been interesting and useful for you. Thanks for watching.